The Microsoft Surface Pro X is one of the best tablets on the market right now, but for most I cannot recommend getting one. It has a very pretty 13 inch screen and a very premium feeling design and great accessories with the Surface Slim Pen and Keyboard cover, but prices are starting at a thousand US dollars without accessories. And instead of an Intel chip, we're getting an ARM processor. I'm NJ from MyNextTablet.com and in this review you will learn everything you need to know about the Surface Pro X. Let's start with the design and the build quality of the Surface Pro X. With this Microsoft has always been excellent in the past and with the new one they improved the design even more. They managed to increase the screen size from 2.3 to 13 inches without making the body bigger. Because of that the screen bezels on the sides are very slim now. The tablet is thinner than the Surface Pro 7 with its 7.3mm, but it weighs about the same at under 800 grams. Instead of a magnesium alloy, Microsoft is using a black aluminium body with rounded edges now. While that looks quite elegant, it also means that you will see fingerprints much easier. Since the ARM processor is passive cooled, there are no air vents and it's completely silent. I noticed that the body seems much sturdier to me than the iPad Pro does. When I use Apple's even thinner tablet without a case, I always have the feeling of bending it by accident. Now that never happened, but it seems much more fragile than the Surface Pro X. Like all Surface tablets, the Pro X has a kickstand built into its back and you can open it very wide. The kickstand seems to be very sturdy and you can open and close it smoothly. Every generation offered a micro SD card slot that was always hidden underneath the kickstand. That feature is missing now. Instead you can use a SIM eject tool to open a lid and insert a SIM card. LTE is the standard with all versions and works well. Next to that SIM card slot you have direct access to the SSD. Yes, the Surface Pro X is the first Surface and one of very few tablets in general that let you replace the SSD on your own. Sure it's a bit smaller than your standard SSD, but at least you can get a replacement without sending it to Microsoft, even though they're recommending that. It's a bit disappointing that just like with Apple's and Samsung's flagship devices, they decided to remove the headphone jack. Well I guess it's time to get over that. There's no USB-A port either. Instead the Pro X has two USB-C ports. No, they don't support Thunderbolt 3, but you can connect USB-C hubs and external monitors anyways. The power button sits on the left side and on the right you will find the volume controls. Even though you can charge the Surface Pro X using both USB-C ports, Microsoft continues to include the Surface Connect port which sits on its right side. And we also get the magnetic Surface Connect charger instead of a USB-C one. On its back, the Surface Pro X features a 10 megapixel camera, so quality is excellent especially for a Windows tablet. And that's what I can say about the 5 megapixel front facing webcam too. Next to that webcam sits an infrared camera, which you can use to unlock the tablet using the facial recognition of Windows Hello. That works fantastic and seems to be as good as Apple's Face ID. The Pro X has two speakers which are barely visible on the sides of the screen. The sound quality is very good and like what we get from other premium tablets. On the bottom, the Surface Pro X has a magnetic connector for keyboards that you've got to buy separately. Even though the connector looks like the ones from other Surface tablets, keyboards of the Pro 7 or Pro 6 are not compatible. For the Surface Pro X you can choose between the Surface Pro X keyboard and the Surface Pro X signature keyboard. I think the signature one is the most interesting because it's covered by an Alcantara material and it has a kind of pouch for the Surface Slim Pen. In fact the pen gets charged while stored inside. The bundle of signature keyboard and slim pen cost 270 US dollars. Sadly that bundle was sold out when I got it in Germany, so I had to get the normal keyboard which cost 140 dollars and I had to buy the slim pen separately which is a bit more expensive. So if you need both, try to get the bundle. Well the keyboards from Microsoft are very expensive, but like I said in my Surface Pro 7 review, I think they're the best official keyboards for any tablet. Much better than what Apple and Samsung are offering, not just a bit, a lot better. 
Even the cheaper standard keyboard feels well made and it's a full size one. I was able to type on it fast without having to get used to it. You've got real keys to press down, a background light is built in and thanks to a magnetic bar you can angle up the keyboard a bit. The touchpad is a bit bigger than the ones from its predecessors and works well. However, it's not as big as the ones from most recent notebooks like a MacBook Pro or so. Six years ago I reviewed the Microsoft Surface 2 which was the last tablet Microsoft released with an ARM processor. Back then it got shipped with Windows RT which had huge limitations compared to Windows 8. Needless to say that Windows RT got killed a couple of years later. Microsoft continued to work on Windows on ARM and even though the Surface Pro X has an ARM processor, it is running normal Windows 10 Home. However, a couple of limitations remained, but let's check out the internal hardware first. Inside the Surface Pro X sits a 3 GHz Microsoft SQ1 processor that they developed together with Qualcomm and has 8 cores. When buying the tablet you can choose between 8 and 16GB of RAM as well as a 128GB to 512GB SSD. Depending on your configuration you will have to pay between 1000 and 1800 US dollars without accessories. My review unit is the cheapest one with 8GB of RAM and a 128GB SSD. In my Geekbench benchmark comparison you can see that the performance of the SQ1 processor is not as good as the recent Intel Core i5 is. At the same time however, it's much more powerful than a cheaper Windows tablet like the Surface Go for instance. Sadly I couldn't run any benchmark tools that test graphics performance on Windows because they are not compatible and that brings us to the limitations that still exist on Windows on ARM devices. Old, not for ARM made 64 bit or x64 apps are not supported. That means that you're not able to play most games. And apps like Adobe Premiere Pro, Premiere Rush, and Lightroom cannot be installed either. Instead, you can install and use all programs that are made for Windows 10 ARM, and 32 bit x86 apps are supported too, they run in an emulator that you won't see. That means you can install most apps from the Microsoft Store, not all, and certainly not all games but most apps. Programs like Chrome are 32 bit and do work. So how good is the real performance? Microsoft's apps run very well, in fact the Surface Pro X does feel very fast and snappy in real life. When working with Microsoft Word, Excel, OneNote and the Edge browser, it feels as fast as a Surface Pro 7 does. Windows runs well too and that's the case for most Microsoft Store apps. With those the tablet feels as fast as ones with recent Intel Core i5 chips do. However, that's not always the case with 32-bit x86 apps like Chrome. Google's browser and even the Chromium based Edge beta do run surprisingly well, much better than on cheaper Intel Windows tablets. For example, you can watch YouTube just like you can on most laptops and it plays smoothly in the background. Yes, even when you're using 10 browser tabs, 2 work documents and an Excel file at the same time. With these apps multitasking performance is great, but sometimes you do notice that it's not as snappy as a normal premium notebook is. That's clearly noticeable when using Photoshop, which is one of very few Adobe apps that you can install on the Surface Pro X. It does run and I did edit a couple of photos with it, but it does not run as it should on a Windows machine that costs a thousand dollars or more. In fact, you can see how the photo is being rendered when you just zoom in a bit or move the visible area. Now you can use many tools like the brush tool and they do work smoothly, but overall the performance is much worse than on the Surface Pro 7. Like I said, most games won't run and that's the case for Adobe Premiere Pro as well. Fortnite is among them too. Some do run however. I tried Asphalt 9 and that racing game does work well. With that being said, Asphalt 9 runs on tablets that cost around $200, so it's not a huge achievement. The Surface Pro X is clearly too weak for you if you want to use Photoshop or play games. For things like that it's either too weak or the app is not supported by Windows ARM. Microsoft's app like Word, Excel and OneNote run great on the other hand and Windows 10 too. The performance of other apps like Chrome is not perfect but pretty good. Now let's get to something positive. The display is 13 inches in size which makes it bigger than all previous Surface Pro tablets. I like that Microsoft is keeping the 3 by 2 aspect ratio because it's the best format for office work. The resolution of the Pixel Sense display is 2880 by 1920 pixels, which is more than before, 
but since the screen got bigger, the pixel density remains at 267 ppi, just like on the Surface Pro 7. I like that the display is very bright, especially for a Windows tablet. Viewing angles are wide and contrast and color reproduction are excellent. It's exactly the kind of screen I expect to get with an expensive premium tablet. Let's get to the new Microsoft Surface Slim Pen. Like I said earlier, you can get it either as a bundle with the keyboard or buy it separately for 145 US dollars. It's the first stylus from Microsoft that has an integrated non-removable battery. If you've got the keyboard bundle, the pen is charged using that keyboard. If you get the stylus alone, it's charged using a USB-C charging station. It's important to note that in this case, the older normal Surface pens are compatible too. So if you owned one in the past or prefer the old one, you can continue to use it. The Surface Slim Pen looks a bit different and has a rechargeable battery, but besides that, it works just like the normal Surface Pen does. It supports 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity, has a button on its side and an eraser button on the back. All those pressure points allow you to draw a thin line when pressing down just a bit and a harder line when pressing the pen down harder. On the right side of the Surface Pro X, you can connect the pen magnetically. However, I think that's not on purpose and works because of the magnets for the Surface Connect port. The Surface Slim Pen is a bit thinner than the normal stylus. I mean, that's why it's called Slim Pen. While the previous ones are made of metal, this one has a full plastic body that makes it feel much cheaper even though it's pricier. Another new aspect is the tip of the Slim Pen. It's as hard as the one of the Apple Pencil now. The normal Surface Pen has a softer tip, but you can buy harder ones too if you want. I always thought that the softer ones feel more like writing on paper until a designer told me that he prefers a harder one because it travels easier over the screen. Well, you've got to try them for yourself to see what you prefer. Both pens work fantastic in apps like OneNote to write on handwritten notes or to draw something. As I said, apps like Photoshop run too, but not good enough to use them a lot. That's why I think the stylus for the Surface Pro X is interesting for handwritten text only. Photographers or designers should go with the Surface Pro 7. In my battery test, the Microsoft Surface Pro X got a runtime of 12 hours and 50 minutes. For this test, I'm always looping the same HD video with medium brightness and activated Wi-Fi. Yes, the battery life is better than on the Surface Pro 7, but the promise of ARM is especially long battery life. That's why that result is a bit disappointing. In real life, the battery lasts longer than other Windows tablets when using Office apps, but with x86 apps like Chrome, the runtime is like what you get with Intel Windows tablets. Yeah, that's a bummer. All right, let's get to the end of this Microsoft Surface Pro X review. Like I said at the beginning, it's a fantastic tablet. I like many aspects a lot. It has a nice design, a pretty screen and great accessories. I also like that LTE is a standard, which is quite rare on Windows devices. For some, the Surface Pro X can be a very interesting choice, but for most it's not. I think it might be worth getting if you're looking for a very high-end Windows tablet for office work. That means for Microsoft Word, Excel and OneNote, but also to surf the web and to write down handwritten notes. The Surface Pro X is made for these tasks and does them well. It's an interesting choice if you're willing to spend lots of money on a high-end design on a premium tablet but needed for office work only. And sure, it's good for watching Netflix and YouTube too, but certainly not for gaming. The tablet is most certainly not for you if you're a photographer or designer. Apps from Adobe either don't work at all or poorly, and I couldn't find any alternatives that run great and that professional photographers would really use. I think that's the case for designers too, and you can't edit videos with it at all. And it's not for gamers either. My final verdict is not super clear, because on the one hand, I like the Surface Pro X a lot, but on the other hand, it's very expensive and you're investing lots of money in a Windows tablet that can't run all Windows apps. And don't forget that among those are drivers you might need for an accessory you might be using. That's why my final verdict is that it is a great tablet, but for most, I cannot comfortably recommend it. Let's check out some alternatives. I think the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 is a much better choice for most. Sure, the design is exactly the same design of the Surface Pro 6 and 5, but the performance is very good, the screen looks nice too, and the keyboard and pen are fantastic. It's a bit cheaper and it's shipped with a normal Intel processor. Apps like Photoshop run very well, and yes, if you want, you can play a bit of Fortnite. The second alternative is the Apple iPad Pro. 
It's an interesting alternative if you don't need Windows and don't need to fully replace a laptop with it. Cypad Pro has a bigger selection of apps that are optimized for touch and it's a better pure tablet. You can get some work done with it, but I wouldn't replace a real PC with it. But for many, it's a perfect second device. Alright, that's the end of my Microsoft Surface Pro X review. If you have any questions, please feel free to write me down below in the comments and check out mynexttablet.com. I'm reviewing pretty much every tablet that is released almost worldwide. And over there on the website, you can always find our current recommendations. I'm Andrzej, thanks for watching and see you next time. Wow, 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 wow.